Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Assimilation Seminar. I'm Nelson Searcy and I'll be your host as we work through how to move someone from first time guest all the way to fully engaged member. Really excited that you're part of this completely revised, updated and expanded Assimilation Seminar. We're gonna have a lot of fun together but we're also gonna do some serious work together because nothing can have a bigger impact on your church than working on improving, enhancing your Assimilation System. So as we go through this, let me just give you one reminder. Along with this seminar, you also have a set of notes. And so you'll want to find the listener's guide. Make sure you have that printed out and every person on your team has a copy. And along the way, I'll give you some fill-in-the-blank notes that you can use to get the most out of our time together today. I just have to tell you, I love the assimilation seminar. I love the assimilation system. And so for just a moment, what I'd like to do is remind you of the power of assimilation. You know, by making some little tweaks to your assimilation system, you can have some great impact. In other words, little tweaks can bring about big peaks. Let me just give you an example of this using the average church in America. So the average church in America has about 200 people in attendance, and they have about four first-time guests a week. So if you can picture that in your mind, maybe that's your church, maybe your church is a little smaller, maybe it's much, much larger, but just think about a church of 200 that has four first-time guests a week. Now, when it comes to assimilation, the average church in America only keeps one out of every 20 people. So they have four per week, they have 20 over the course of a month. The average church only gets one of those to come back. So one out of 20 is their assimilation ratio. That means that the average church only retains 10 first-time guests a year. Even though they have four per week, they only have a net gain of 10 per year. But now imagine that same church going to work on their assimilation system. They implement the principles and the techniques that we're gonna talk about in this seminar and they cut their assimilation in half or, in other words, they improve it by 100%. So now instead of keeping one out of every 20 people, they keep one out of every 10 people. So same church, average attendance, 200. Total first time guests a week, four. But this time their assimilation rate is one out of 10. So this means their growth over the course of a year is no longer 10 people. Instead, the church grows by 20 people. Now, this is a net increase of twice as many first-time guests. 20 first-time guests versus 10 first-time guests. Now, this is a small analogy, but I just want you to see that by making small changes to your assimilation rate, you can have a big increase. So imagine what your church would look like if you could keep one more first-time guest a month. That's a net increase of 12 people a year. What if you could keep one more first-time guest a week? Well, that is a net increase of 52 people per year. So you see, nothing really impacts the growth of your church more than assimilation, and little changes can have a big impact. In fact, at the Journey Church, we keep about one first-time guest for every three that walks through the door. It's actually a little better than that. In fact, we keep about 40% of the first-time guest. So we have a system that we know if we get new people through the door, more than likely they are going to show up and they're going to come back. And this can lead to some pretty amazing growth inside of your church and also can lead to some amazing life change because we know if we don't get first-time guests to come back, then they're not going to be able to hear about Jesus. They're not going to be able to grow as his follower. They're never going to become that fully developed follower of Jesus that God wants all of us to be. So what you're working on here can have a big impact in your church, and I want to thank you for giving your attention and your focus to this important area called assimilation. Now, I'm sure a lot of you may know me from coaching, or you know me from my books, or you know me from other seminars, but what you may not know is some of the early story of the Journey Church. So let me take you back to when we first began our church many years ago. We began in a comedy club on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Now, before we officially launched our church on Easter Sunday, we did a series of monthly services leading up to our launch. And if you're familiar with my church planning strategy and system for how to launch a church, you know you move to an area and you do these monthly services. Well, I had moved to New York City with no money, no members, no meeting location, but I quickly secured a place. We did monthly services September, October, November, December, January and February, 
And then we eventually had a grand opening. We launched our church on Easter Sunday, which was in March on this particular year. Now, on that Sunday, we had 110 people show up. And I was ecstatic. 110 people? I mean, I had just moved there a few months prior to that. I thought this was a great number to start with. But then it was the next Sunday that I learned my very first principle of church growth as a new church planter in New York City. I learned that everybody who comes on Easter Sunday does not come back the Sunday after Easter. But the good news is we had 55 people come back. So I thought, that's not bad. I kept half. But then unfortunately, through my dynamic leadership and charismatic preaching, I grew the church down to 35 over the next three months. So here we are in September, and I'm having a crisis. I'm having a crisis of belief. And I, and I began to have this conversation with God. And maybe when you've gone through crisis, you've had a similar conversation with God. I'm asking God, why is this happening? I'm telling God, at the rate we're declining, we're going to be out of business, if you will, by Christmas. And I moved here to start this new church, but now things were not going the way I thought they should go. In fact, I began to sort of get mad at God. And I began to tell God all of the things that I had done for him. So as I was talking to God in my prayer time, I was telling God that I'd moved across country prior to living in New York City. I'd lived in Southern California and I'd left a job at a very large church as an associate pastor. So I told God how I'd left that church and moved across country. I told God how I'd sold my house and moved into this little tiny one bedroom apartment, how my wife had given up her dream job to move here with me to start this church. I told God about how I was working bivocationally at a job that I hated just so I could pay the bills and do this church at night. And I was really having this pity party about what was going on at our church. But then it was somewhere right in there that God interrupted, as God sometimes does. Now, I don't know what your denominational background is. I'm ordained Baptist, so I have to tell you that God spoke to me in my heart. Now, if you're Pentecostal, you might just say, well, God spoke to you. But whatever it was, God did begin to speak to me. And God interrupted my pity party, and he started to remind me of all the things that he had done for me how he had called me to New York City to be a pastor of this new church, even though I didn't deserve it, how he had provided for me all over all these years that I'd been a Christian, how he had forgiven me of my sins, saved my soul, and given me a home in heaven. And finally, I said, okay, God, I relent. I relent. What's going on here? What do I need to do? And then, over the next few weeks, God began to teach me some new things about being a pastor. He taught me about growth barriers that I could unintentionally block his blessing in our new church. And then God taught me about church systems, how I had to work to build systems that could be sustainable and repeatable over the long haul to help each person that walked through the doors of our church. Now, growth barriers and church systems, those are things I go into and other resources, but for our purposes today, one of the first things I felt like God asked me is this question, Nelson, what are you doing with the first time gifts that I'm sending you each Sunday? Now, at first I thought surely God meant guest because we were having first time guests. I mean, even though our church was declining in a sense, each week there were new people. In fact, I could point them out. I mean, in a church of 35, I could just look around and say, well, you're new and you're new and I've never seen you before. And I would count them and I would write down a number on a card each week and say, praise the Lord, we had three first-time guests or one first-time guest and I'm sure there were Sundays where we had none. But the question that God was asking me is, what are you doing with those first-time gifts that I'm sending you? I think about that language for just a moment. Every week, God entrusts each of us with first-time gifts. These are first-time people who choose to come to our church. So I answered back to God, well, God, I'm counting them, and that's pretty much it. I'm hoping they come back, and on occasion, I would pray for them and beg God to bring them back to our church. But I really didn't have an intentional process or an assimilation system to manage even those few first-time guests we were having way back when. So I started thinking about that. Well, if God is sending me a gift every week, then I ought to try to capture their information. I mean, I ought to do follow-up with these first-time guests. And many of them would fill out our early version of a communication card. And we'll go into great detail about what a communication card is later. But many of them were giving me their names and their contact info, but I was just putting it in a file or putting it in a database and forgetting about it. So the first thing I started doing was following up with my first-time gifts. And then I thought, you know, if somebody gave me a wedding gift or a birthday gift, 
I would write them a handwritten note and I would send them a, a thank you note for that gift. Now, I can't send a thank you note to God, but I could send a thank you note to each of these guests that God was entrusting to me. So then I started to write handwritten notes to each of them, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. And over time, I began to develop this system that we're going to talk about today, a system that allows you to move someone from first-time guest to second-time guest to regular attender and then all the way to fully engaged members. So as I started taking care of the gifts that God was sending me, I began to see more and more people coming back for a second time. And then we began to see more and more people come for the first time. Because isn't that what the scripture says? If you're faithful with the few, you will be entrusted with the many. Now, the journey didn't turn around overnight. In fact, those early months were still pretty rough. But by Christmas, we began to see some upturn. We were at least growing again. We were out of business by Christmas. And then into the new year, we began to grow a little bit more. And on our first anniversary, we were almost back up to where we had launched. And within a couple of years, we were a church of 200. It seemed like a long time, but God was growing. And as I look back, I can see those numbers and the increase. And then, many of you know, the journey became one of the fastest growing churches in America. I started coaching pastors, writing books, and you know the story of the journey today. But it all started with that question. What are you doing with the first time gifts that I'm sending you? And that's really the question that is behind this entire seminar. What are you doing with the first time gifts that God is sending to your church? Maybe you have one first time guest a month, or maybe you have one per week, or maybe you have dozens a week. In fact, as the journey began to grow, I, re I still remember that Sunday where we had as many first-time guests on that particular Sunday as we had people in attendance when our church first launched. In other words, if you remember, we launched with 110 people. I remember many years later when we had 110 first-time guests. And today, that's not unusual. You put together all of the journey campuses and all the locations. We have hundreds of first-time guests who come to our church, and now we have a system that is designed to build a connection with them, to invite them to come back for a second time, to help them find Christ in their life if they're not already a believer, to help them normalize their attendance in the church, and then to go through membership where they can fully serve and fulfill God's purpose. That's what this is all about. Yes, today we're going to be talking about a system. And I want to show you a system and some very specific ideas and uh, techniques that you can implement in your church. But it's really about people. It's about those gifts that God is entrusting to you. And so why don't you take just a moment right now before we go any further and just thank God for the first time gifts that he's sending you. Whether it's a few a month or many a week or whatever it might be. Say, God, we're grateful. And then say, God, teach us and show us how we can manage these gifts that you have entrusted to us. Ask God to open up your heart and open up your mind to some new ideas. Ask God to give you the faith to try something new. And many of these ideas that I'll be sharing with you, they'll be new ideas. Ask God to give you the faith to put some budget money in this area and to invest in these gifts that he's sending you. Ask God to give you an open heart and a sensitive mind to what we're going to talk about. In fact... Before we go any further, why don't we take just a moment and pray together right now. Let me pray for you as you pray for one another. God, I thank you for each person in each church that is part of this seminar. I pray that you will open our hearts and minds to what you want to say to us. God, I pray that you'll give me just the exact words that I need to say to help each church and each pastor that's listening here. God, we're grateful that every week and every month you trust us with first-time gifts, and we acknowledge that that is a statement of your faith in us and your hope for our church. And so God, teach us to be faithful and take this system that I will be teaching and apply it and give supernatural insight to how each church that's listening, wherever they are in the world, whatever you're doing, whatever denominational background they may be from, help them to apply it to their church so that they can better move people from first-time guests to fully engaged members. We dedicate our time to you. We dedicate our future sessions to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I want, you to, I want to go back to one of those phrases. I've talked about what are you doing with the first time gifts that God is sending you. But I want to just quickly make a distinction between the word guest and the word visitor. Now, I talk about each guest as being a first time gift from God. 
But even most churches still do not use the guest language. Now, I don't expect you to use the gift language. That was designed just to set our thinking and open up our hearts and minds for the seminar. But I want to challenge your thinking when it comes to visitors. You know, the difference between a visitor and a guest, in my mind, is very profound. You know, a visitor is someone that you're really not expecting. You know, imagine it's 7 o'clock and you're finishing up dinner at your house and there's a knock on the door. And you say, well, who is that? We're not expecting anyone. Well, that person at that moment is a visitor. They're an unexpected person. And so the goal for a visitor is to dismiss them, to get rid of them as quickly as possible. But now let's flip that scenario and it's 7 o'clock in the evening and some friends of yours, some invited guests, Someone maybe from your neighborhood or from your office. You may know them well or you may hardly know them at all, but they knock on the door. Now, this is someone you've been expecting. It's someone you want to welcome into your home. It's probably someone you've even been preparing for. You know, before they even showed up at 7 o'clock, you were thinking about how to create a comfortable environment for them. If you're serving dinner, you may be thinking, I wonder what they would like. You may have even asked them what they might enjoy. A guest is someone that you want to invite in. And very soon, you not only want to welcome them, but you want to start treating them like family. You want them to be comfortable. You want your night with them to be the best that it possibly can be. So a guest is someone that you're expecting. In fact, that's what I think a church is. A church is really a family that is expecting guests. And just like you might prepare for guests in your home, I want you to think about how can you prepare for guests in your church? How can you take someone who right now is a stranger to God, but they are led by God's Holy Spirit to show up at your church, you welcome them in as a guest, you build a process and a follow-up system that is friendly and comfortable and gets them to come back for a second time. And now they start thinking, maybe this is my place, maybe this is my home. And then as God does his work in their life, they may indeed be adopted into the family of God through Jesus Christ. And they become a brother or sister inside the church. And then they become a joint heir with Christ Jesus as they grow and understand what it's all about. You see, that process that I just laid out, and we'll come back to that a little bit later, that's the process that God works in our lives. God, through his power, takes us from being strangers to being family members in Christ to eventually being joint heirs with Christ. We call that biblical hospitality. This approach in your church, yes, we call it assimilation. Yes, it is a a system, but it really is about you fulfilling the biblical hospitality that God has called your church to fulfill. So you invite in the stranger, you welcome them as a guest. Through God's power, they become a follower of Jesus, adopted into his family, and then they grow and become fully engaged members in your church, understanding what it means to be a joint heir with Christ Jesus. That's what assimilation is. Your church is a family expecting guest. So here's what I want you to decide. Decide that you're no longer going to use the V word. And in fact, in my vocabulary, the V word is a curse word. If I'm ever doing a seminar or in one of my coaching networks and someone talks about v, 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 uh, sorry, I can hardly even say this curse word now. They're, they're talking about visitors in their church. I, I sometimes say, why, why are you cursing at me? Why, why are you using that kind of language? They're guest. And so let's think about how we can welcome guests into our church. Now, for future sessions, we're going to look at how do you welcome those first-time guests? And then how do we turn first-time guests into second-time guests? And there's something very significant about what happens when somebody comes to your church. And then we're going to look at how to move them to become regular attenders and then eventually into fully engaged members of your church. That's where we're going. Now, our key verse for this system is found in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Each of the scriptures I'm going to give you is from the New Living Translation, but if you prefer a different translation, use whatever works for you. But in 2 Peter 3, 18, Peter tells us, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you see, just as we must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to do everything we can to help these first-time gifts, guests, 
that come to our church also grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. We want to create a welcoming environment where they can come in and learn about Jesus and know Jesus personally and grow in him and understand grace and eventually become that fully developing follower. So just as you must grow as a follower, we must create environments and systems for that to happen as well. Now, if you've never heard me use the word system before, don't get too caught up on that. A system is just a sustainable process that you can use whether you have one first-time guest or you have a hundred first-time guests. But the point of a system is that it gives you a consistent, repeatable, sustainable, and scalable way to ensure that no first-time guest falls through the cracks. And I, I know that you want every first-time guest who comes to your church to have a great experience. You want everyone to come back. You want everyone to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we move forward in our seminar, we're gonna focus on three areas. This seminar is gonna focus, first of all, on retaining first-time guests, because that's really where assimilation starts. Somebody comes to your church for the first time, that technically, by the way, is the evangelism seminar, and I have other trainings on evangelism. How do you get more first-time guests to your church? But assimilation that we're talking about, it picks up when someone comes for the first time. So we're gonna look at how do you retain those first-time guests, and that's so critical. In fact, the majority of our time is gonna be on first-time guests, because if you get the first-time guest experience right, then it will help you with second-time guests, regular attenders, and members. So we're gonna dive into first-time guests here in just a few sessions. And then we wanna talk about how do you help those guests take next steps? Are those next steps clear? Are the next steps of sharing their contact info, is that clear? Are the next steps spiritual steps like becoming a follower of Jesus and baptism and eventually joining a group and membership or participating in fun events? How do you make those clear? And yes, first-time guests can come to your church and they can immediately take a step to get connected and to start building relationships inside of your church. So we're going to focus on helping guests take next steps. And then really, number three, our third focus in this seminar is on life transformation, because that's really what this is all about. It is a system. There is going to be some very specific, sustainable, repeatable processes that I'm going to teach you, but it's really all about seeing a life transformed. And you know, if you think about your own life, there was a time you came to church for the first time. Now, I imagine there's still a few people that uh, were brought to church by their parents, but more and more, most of you were like me. You made a decision sometime as an adult to come to church. I mean, I remember my first experience with going to church as an adult. I had a few experiences with church as a child, but that wasn't part of my life until I was in college. And I made a decision to go to a church. And I didn't know where to enter. I didn't know where to go. I didn't understand all the terms. It was all uh, unfamiliar to me. But I remember that experience. And that, for me, started what has now been a lifetime transformation process. Going to church for the first time is what led me to Christ and what led me to baptism and led me to grow and led me to understand God's word. And it's radically transformed my life. And I'm sure as you think about your story, that's true for many of you as well. Your life has been transformed because some church, some group of people that cared for you, they assimilated you. They helped you go from stranger to guest to family member to fully engaged follower. So this is a seminar about life transformation. Now, from a technical standpoint, this seminar is going to make three big moves. And in your listener's guide, we, t we lay this out for you, that the assimilation process that I teach, it's pretty linear. You you'll be able to grasp it very easily because it is in sections, from section one to section two to section three. So the first step that we're going to look at in our next session is how do you move someone from becoming a first-time guest to a second-time guest? So from first-time guest to second-time guest, that's step number one. So in our next session, we're going to look a lot at how do you create a welcoming environment for first-time guests, how do you capture the follow-up information for first-time guests, and then how do you get them to come back a second time? So that's stage one. Stage two, or step two, is from being a second-time guest to now being a regular attender. 
What do you do when someone comes back for a second time? How do you treat them differently than their first time? And then more importantly, how do you help them normalize and regularize their attendance inside the church? And there's some very specific things that you can do, some specific next steps that you can help them take, some intentional relationships that you can build with that person, some specific responsibilities you can give a second time guest to help them become a regular attender. And a regular attender, by my definition, as we'll look at, is someone who now is calling your church their home. You're the preferred church that they go to. And two times a month or three times a month, they're in attendance or maybe even one time a month, but they're regular. It's their place. They have now found your church. And then that takes us to our third big step or stage in the Assimilation Seminar. And that is from regular attender to fully engaged member. Now, maybe your church has a formal membership process, or maybe just after a long time, someone does sort of consider themselves a member. But either way, this is where they're no longer casual about their attendance, but they're living it out. They're fully engaged in the church. They're attending, they're serving, they're giving, they're growing. They're what we call core people inside of a church. Now, I'm a big fan of a formalized membership process. I'll show you how we do that, but I don't spend a lot of time on that because a lot of churches do it very differently. But I do think it's important that you have a way for people to self-identify regular attender versus a fully engaged member, and that'll be our last session. Now, from a time standpoint, we're gonna spend most of our time on stage one. We're gonna spend more sessions than any other on that move from first-time guest to second time guests because there's so many things you want to do to welcome first time guests and you get that right and it'll have a bleed over or spillover effect into all the other areas. But start thinking what that process is in your church right now. What are you currently doing when it comes to first time guests? What are you currently doing when it comes to second time guests? And then what are you currently doing in helping regular attenders move to membership? And perhaps a discussion you may want to have or uh, some thinking you may want to do after this first session is, what am I doing for first-time guests? Am I capturing their information? How many first-time guests do we have on an average Sunday? Where are the holes in our process? Where, where are the places where it seems like guests sort of fall off and they fall through the cracks? And then what could we begin to do to improve? But a very specific action step I want to give you here at the end of our first session is that I want you to start this week praying for your first time guest. Take some time, maybe on Sunday afternoon or maybe on Monday, and pray for each of those first time guests that you have. Take time to thank God that he is entrusting your church with these specific gifts. Pray for those individuals that are there. And you know, a lot of times, even if you just have basic contact info from someone, you know a lot about them. I mean, you know if they're married, maybe it's Mr. and Mrs. that uh, fill out that follow-up card and you know that they're married so you can pray for that marriage. Maybe you have an email address and you see that it's tied to a local business or a local corporation. Then you can pray for them in their workplace and where they might uh, spend most of their time. Maybe they give you an address and you have a general idea of where they might live or perhaps they give you some uh, ch children names and you can pray for their kids and pray for their relationships or maybe they tell you their age and this tells you something about them. You know, you may not know everything about your first-time guests, but you can sort of use your godly insight to pray for them as specifically as you can. And then perhaps you're listening to this as a team. Maybe you and the team can pray for those first-time guests. In fact, maybe one of the action steps after this session is to go back and pull the names of some first-time guests that have been to your church over the last month and pray for them even right now. Pray for them by name. Ask God to give you the heart to develop this assimilation seminar so that you can take care of every guest from here on out that God's going to send you. And then know that I'm going to be praying for you. And I hope you'll pray for me as I teach this session. And I know the power of assimilation. You see, as I teach this to you today, I stand on a track record of having trained over 3,000 churches to use this system. In fact, it's more than 3,000. To be quite frank with you, I stopped collecting the testimonies or stopped counting the testimonies at around 3,000. And I've seen churches have dramatic turnarounds by working on their assimilation process. In fact, I've seen churches that are 100 or 150 years old that have been stagnant for a long time go to work on what we're talking about here and start seeing that turnaround. It's not going to be instant, but month after month as they focus on these first-time gifts and they focus on the few 
God begins to bless them with more. And then they take care of those and God begins to bless them with more. So maybe you're an old established church and perhaps things have been a little stagnant and you're ready for that turnaround. This will help you do it. Or the thing I see many times is a new church, a young church, or maybe a growing church. They come in and implement these systems and they immediately see a lot of growth. So if you're a church planter, you build the assimilation from the start. You know, after we started other locations and other churches out of the journey, we could put the system in immediately. And that allowed those other campuses and other churches to grow faster than that original campus that I was telling you about. So wherever you are and whatever stage of life that you're in as a church, this is going to have a dramatic impact on your church. And I'm praying for that, and I hope you'll pray for that. In fact, why don't you take some time to pray right now, and I'll be back for our next session 